What's going on guys, Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here, and I just recently went to the Mendenhall Mississippi Regional yesterday at the time of recording, I'm recording this on Monday, the Regional was on Sunday, and I managed to get Top 8 with Paleozoic Tier Elements, and well really I got 2nd place, so technically Top 4, but I did get to obtain my 3rd Curry Car Mat. And yeah, that's super cool, and Paleozoic Tier was a deck I really wanted to do well with, because I think the deck's really cool, and I had a couple of questions on like whether I thought it was the best way to play Tier Elements going forward. I had that question from several people at the Regional. No, I don't think it's like the best version of Tier Elements, however, I do think it's the best version of Paleozoic, and that's why to me it's more of a Paleo deck than a Tier Element deck, which I think is what's really cool about it. It plays so different from a lot of tier decks and it plays a lot of funky, unique cards, which I really enjoy. Uh, before I get into the profile, I do want to show my rounds on the screen here and sort of talk about them very briefly, um, not to take up like 20 minutes talking about the rounds, but to go over what I played against. Round 1, I played against Sword Soul. Round 2, I played against Math Mech, which I think was the deck I played the second most amount through the event. Uh, and it was, an, it was like a matchup I didn't really prepare too much for, but we were able to pull that one out. Round three, I played against Adventure Sprite uh, with Runic with the Runic package in it, so it's like Runic Adventure Sprite. Round four, I once again played against Math Mech. Round five, I played against Evil Twin Sprite, which was like, like without the Runic cards, I'm pretty sure. So that was just pure Evil Twin Sprite. Round 6, I played against an actual mirror match, not like tier limits. I played against specifically Paleozoic tier limits, which I thought was so funny. There were actually surprisingly five, I think, in the venue, uh, or at the shop, I guess we didn't run out of venue, but yeah, there were five Paleozoic tier element players, which I find so hilarious because that deck is super like under the radar, like it's not a secret or anything, people know about the deck. But it's not super popular either, so that was really funny to me that I played an actual mirror match. Then lastly, I played against Evil Twin, Sprite, Runic. So sort of like a lot, where a lot of people have been shifting with the Sprite deck is to play it with both Evil Twin and the Runic package. And that was my only loss all day was round 7 in the finals, so I did end up getting second place. Uh, and yeah, they were all really good games, like it was a pretty fun event. and. Yeah, so with sort of the rounds out of the way, you know, I'll mention sort of what happened in certain matchups as I go through the profile, but that's pretty much all for talking about like what I played against so you guys can see it again on the screen. And yeah, without further ado, let's hop in to this Paleozoic Tier Element deck profile. Although one more thing I forgot to mention before I hop into the profile, uh, shout out to the sponsor Steel Fox Games for helping me go to the event. I definitely don't want to forget shouting out that. So yeah, now let's get into the deck profile. Alright, so because this is like a regional top deck profile, I am going to go over things a little more in depth. We're going to go over the 40 card main deck, the 15 card extra, and the 15 card side deck and talk about my ratios and reasoning and how they worked out for me during the day. So starting with the tier elements, we are going to start off with three tier elements Merly. One of the better tier element monsters in this deck because obviously its stats line up very well with the Paleos being a level 2 Aqua. And she's like a really strong starter. And then we have three tier elements Hoffness, which is very good because she is a hand trap and sort of allows you to get your engine rolling on your opponent's turn. And these are the only two tier elements that we actually max out. And that's because this deck doesn't like facilitate the other tier elements as much. And I'll sort of explain that when we go over the ratios of the other tier element monsters. Two Shiren, and we're just gonna go ahead and talk about the two Rhino Heart. So both of these I played at two instead of three. The reason being like you don't run enough monsters to really facilitate Shiren as much. So playing three, you'll end up getting like hands where you draw just Shiren and not another monster. And then she's definitely just the worst tier limit in your deck. However, you still want to play a decent amount of her, sort of like the middle amount being two because you don't mind milling her. You want her to be searchable. You want her name in deck. You want to have her sometimes. Uh, and if one gets banished and you only run one, it's pretty tough. So I felt like two Shiren was the best number. And then two Rhino Heart because while he's like one of the best starters, if not the best starter because he like guarantees you're going to get something, he's just like the worst mill for your tier limit monsters because again, we're not running as many tier limit cards as say like pure tier limits. It's just sometimes you mill him and he does nothing. So with the objective of this deck being that you want all of your mills to be good mills. I felt like three Rhino Heart was very like cloggy and you don't want too many normal summons. So you would have like the three Merly, the two Rhino Heart 
and two of like an upcoming monster, which is just like a lot of normal summons in the deck. So I wanted to keep Rhino Heart and Shiren at sort of a lower count, but their names are very important. Like Rhino Heart's name is particularly important because it's the only way you can make Kaleido Heart. And that's sort of why I played the ratios the way I did. That's 10 tier limit monsters. Then we have the best tier limit card. We have the one instant fusion. And fun fact, this is the only spell I play in my deck. This deck is running one spell card. Again, the idea is that I want every card to be a good mill. And spells are often not good mills, so we are not playing something like Called by the Grave or Super Polymerization. A lot of people recommended Called by the Grave to me because, you know, it is a good card. But again, I wanted to stay with the motif that all my mills need to be good. And I was like already frustrated with how many like mills I had that weren't optimal, even though I run technically only four bad mills. But I'll get more into that as we go through the profile. Something to note about Instant Fusion is I only drew it one time during the entire event. And, you know, it was good, but it wasn't like super crazy, so unfortunate that I didn't open this card more, but I opened up another pretty powerful card more often to compensate. The last tier limit card I'm playing is, of course, the 3 Solyek. Um, Solyek is something you want to max out, I think, in this version because it combos very well with the Paleo engine in general, because, like, you can just activate this to proc a Paleo, but also Morella can send this to the graveyard, which is huge because it nets you a search. So, like, it, it works with both engines, and obviously you are milling a lot of cards, so you want to hit this naturally as well. So just maximizing the chance to mill it. Again, I want all of our mills to be good mills. Uh, and also, this card is just a very powerful card, and it combos very well with Rise to Full Height as well. So, Solyek is something I want to maximize, even though you do draw, like, some hands you have multiple with no tier limit monster. And those are kind of tough. You hope you draw, like, a different starter. But if you don't, that can be rough, but I still think it's worth playing 3 Solyek. The last monster in the deck is 2 Backjack, and Backjack was honestly, like, one of the GOATs yesterday. Like, this card was performing so well. I usually run 1, and most of my testing, I think I've been on 1 Backjack, but I upped it to 2 because he really is such a clutch mill because he, like, lets you get another interrupt, but also another trap card for your Paleo. So it's, like, big for multiple reasons, but it can also set up to where you, like, mill tier limit monsters and get free fusion summons on your opponent's turn, and then you can also set up your further top decks. So Backjack was really good, and I, I'm not sure if I, like, 1 or 2. I essentially was at, like, 37 cards in the deck, and I had to fit, like, 3 extra cards just to get to 40. Um, but Backjack was definitely one of the best, and he definitely overperformed yesterday. Alright, on to the heart and soul of the deck, the trap cards. And, like, I, I know a lot of people are gonna see this and think it's, like, a standard trap deck, and, you know, like, has all the negative connotations some people give to trap decks that they're really, like, annoying to play against. But this deck has zero floodgates. There's no, like, real floodgate in this deck that stops your opponent from playing. There's, like, a card you could make an argument for, but it, it's... There's no, like, toxic floodgates like Mystic Mine or Rivalry or TC Boo or anything like that. It's literally, like, the traps are all just super fair cards that let the engine play uh, and interact with the opponent. So, again, the objective is that you have 40 good mills in your deck except for four cards and going into three of them. We have three Needle Bug Nest, and this was definitely one of the biggest blowouts of the day. Uh, this card is insane. It literally just says mill the top five cards of your deck, but that's super crazy, and it procs your Paleos, and you can hit it off back jack, which is insane. That happened once or twice yesterday. Uh, yeah, this card was phenomenal, and unfortunately, like, the only problem is that it's not good to mill, but that's like a small price to play pay for how powerful this card is. Uh, and it just makes it worth it to run 100% even though it's not a good mill. And I'm technically playing like a fourth needle bug nest in the form of Laundry Trap, which a lot of you may not know what this card does. Essentially, once per chain, when you summon a monster, you can mill the top card of your deck. And then its other effect is when it's sent to Graveyard, you can target a card that was sent to Graveyard that turn. Or when it's sent to Graveyard from deck, I should mention. You can target a card that was sent to that Graveyard that turn, add it to your hand, and then you can't use it until the end of your next turn. So pretty important to note about this card is that it works similar to like a Dogmatica Punishment. Where like if you use Punishment on your turn, you can't use your extra deck that turn and you can't use your extra deck your next turn. It's until the end of your next turn. So this card is much more useful when you mill it on your opponent's turn because you have to wait like one less turn it feels like. And even though Needlebug Nest is not like a good mill, there, there's something called Full Combo, where Hobness mills Needlebug Nest and Laundry Trap, and you just Laundry Trap add back your Needlebug Nest, and that's pretty pretty nice, it's pretty powerful. Uh, Laundry Trap definitely overperformed than it did in testing, like, I was considering taking this card out several times, but it, it definitely performed very well yesterday. I had one game where during my opponent's draw phase, I summoned six times, six or seven times, and milled seven or six cards off of this card, and it chain-blocked 
everything I did so my opponent could not really deal with it. And yeah, Laundry Trap was actually very good. So I'm pretty glad I played the one of it, even though it's sort of like a nifty, funky, unique card. It, it worked for me pretty well. For the real engine of the deck, we have three Paleozoic Morella, which is my favorite Paleo monster because it's kind of like a starter. I absolutely love seeing this card. It's a card I really want to see in my opening hand. We have three Dinomiscus, just like your most flexible form of Interrupt. Uh, it can out a lot of really annoying cards like the Runic Field Spell and gets around Huggin, it outs Mystic Mine, it outs Floodgates, and it's just a really good form of not only discarding things like Solyek or Tier Element Monsters or Backjack, but also just getting rid of threats. So Dynamiscus definitely one you want to max out on. Uh, and then three Paleozoic Canadia, which is technically like the third best Paleo monster. Uh, it's a Book of Moon, which is super useful in some matchups. It's another interruption. So it's definitely one I wanted to max out on, and it's just overall really good. And we just played nine Paleos, the nine best Paleos. You can like run a Temp Paleo in the form of either an Olenoides, or like a Lee and Colio, which I tested around with for a long time, but Paleos, while they're very good mills, if you mill too many without seeing other really good cards, they end up like not doing as much as like anything else, because you need other cards like in rotation for these to actually do stuff. So I didn't want to mill too many Paleos with like 10, uh, and also seeing something like Leoncolia in your opening hand can be tough, and sometimes Olenoides isn't good in the matchup, so I just wanted to play the 9 best Paleos, and that's what I did. 3, Lost Wind, and this card honestly was just absolutely ridiculous. This card is so good. I, I feel like this card never gets played because, you know, it's just a gen it's like a trap card with no engine, right? Like, no real deck like Sword Soul back in Sword Soul format or Despio could really afford to run something like Lost Wind because it's just not good enough, right? But when you actually get to play this card because it makes sense in your deck, like a deck like this, this card just feels so absurdly powerful. So you target a special summon monster and you negate its effects and half its attack forever, which is just actually insane because it, the fact that sometimes you can't deal with the threat you negate, but the fact that it's negated forever is so insanely good. And the fact that this card just resets itself to use like either multiple times or if you milled it, it's just free, it, it's absolutely bonkers. Also, it gives you free trap cards to proc your Paleo, which is like really, really big in the deck. Alongside the three Lost Wind, we also played one Titanicider, sort of one of those cards where I said I was at 37 cards and I just had to fit three more cards that worked well in the deck. Titanicider performed okay for me. If you don't know what it does, essentially it's like a weaker Lost Wind with some additional benefits. Like it sets itself the exact same way, but it can't do it the turn it sent to Graveyard, which is relatively annoying, but still good in some situations. Uh, it makes the monsters attack zero, which is nice, but it can only target extra deck monsters. The real biggest benefit that this card has over Lost Wind is that when you use it, like after setting it, it doesn't banish. So like in pretty heavy grind games, you could set this card two or three or even four times and it's always going to be there giving you value, which is another reason I wanted to only play one is it's a hard once per turn. So it's technically like four Lost Wind, Titanicider is just worse than this card, but it's still really good for what the deck is like trying to accomplish. Three, Breakthrough Skill. This card is bonkers. This card was great all day. This is really like, it's better than Lost Wind in some situations because Lost Wind, so you need to reset it and then sometimes your opponent can deal with it before it passes back to your turn with something like an access code. Breakthrough Skill, when it hits Graveyard, I'm pretty confident that it will be doing something on my follow-up turn. Like if I mill it with Hobness on my opponent's turn, I'm probably going to be able to use Breakthrough Skill to stop something my opponent has to let me play, and Breakthrough really help the follow-up be better, because you like gain all this follow-up, but if it doesn't stick or you can't play through your opponent's board, it doesn't do anything, and Breakthrough was a really helpful card that lets you do that, and also, it's like just a good spot negate, something like drawing an Imperm, for example, uh, but it's also a normal trap and it just procs your Paleos, so this card definitely performed about as well as I thought it would, like it performed better than I guess most of the cards in the deck, but I also expected it to. This card is just really nice because it's just a free mill. Uh, it's nothing crazy, obviously, like I'm not going to hype Breakthrough Skill to be up the best card in my deck, but it was just solid and performed very well. Now the card that makes this deck actually function as a deck, it's the only reason Paleo can exist in any format post this card's printing in my opinion, uh, and arguably the only card you could technically call a Floodgate is 3 Rise to Full Height. So this is the essentially the only reason Paleo works because it like Paleos have one huge weakness which is being run over in battle and what this allows you to do is like spam your board with Paleos, target a non-Paleo to be the only monster your opponent can attack and your Paleos will survive the turn usually because they're unaffected by monster effects 
they need spell and trap destruction to like get rid of them or not not spell and trap destruction but spells and traps that do monster destruction um because they're not spells and traps they're monsters on the field so rise to full height while it's not something you really want to draw in fact i had a couple of games including the finals uh where i drew two of this in my opening hand and that's really tough because it's like starting with three cards but you need to maximize three of this in your deck. It's one of the most powerful cards because if you're unaware, and a small little tip for this card if you want to build this deck, is that if you target a monster like Totally Awesome and then you tribute Totally Awesome to negate something, your opponent can still only attack that Totally Awesome, which means essentially they can enter battle phase, but they can't attack anything. So this card becomes very like the only floodgate type card in the deck because you're technically removing your opponent's battle phase away for a turn. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to maximize three of this. This card is the reason the deck works. Last card in the deck, the 40th card, we have one Vivid Tail. So this card was really good for me. Like, I really enjoy this card. There's a couple of other people in the Paleo tier community that I've talked with um, who are more like for high rate draw. And I think they each have their pros and cons. I do like Vivid Tail being able to like reuse resources, um, like bouncing back your Hovness, bouncing back a Murley or whatever's on board you want to get back. Uh, I, I also just like how easy this card is to use when set, like the actual effect of high rate draw, not the one in graveyard, but the one where you can just like activate it on field is much harder to resolve than Vivid Tail because you could just like set a trap card and then activate Vivid Tail to bounce it back to hand and then reset it, which is, it means it's really easy to proc Paleos off of this card. So I think there's merit to high rate draw, but I think personally I like Vivid Tail more. Uh, I was also testing a card called Backup Team for a while, which was interesting, but overall I think Vivid Tail was like the best type of like resetting card like this. On to the extra deck, we of course have our Amanda La Palm Field Center featuring uh, Spy Family, so yeah, definitely love this Field Center. Uh, and then we're going to start with the Tier Limit Fusions. We have two Kit Kalos, which is just the best card in the extra deck. Well, no, excuse me. Second best card in the extra deck. Uh, she was just, again, overperforming. She's like your main tier limit monster. Nothing much to say here. You're definitely going to play two of it in a deck like this because you will go into it very, very often. Uh, we have the one Kaleido Heart, which is just one of your biggest boss monsters in the extra deck. And yeah, he comes up clutch a lot. We have the Drago Stapelia, which is huge because you can send, obviously, Kit Kalos back with a Paleo to make, or not a Paleo, Kit Kalos and a Tier Limit to make this. Nothing super strange about the fusion lineup. One Mud Dragon, so we can like recycle our Drago Stapelia, and also Mud Dragon is just like a pretty good card. Um, I made every single fusion yesterday, but Mud Dragon really only came up once to be 1900 damage. Uh, in testing, I made him more, but at the event, I just didn't need him that often. So everything else came up in the fusion lineup, but Mud Dragon was really just a 1900 beat stick. Uh, looking at the fusions, I chose not to play Garura, mostly for space, and that'll make more sense as I go through it. Like, there just was no space, in my opinion, to play Garura. This is, like, one of the tighter extra decks I've had in a deck in a while, uh, and it's extremely hard to fit that bird. So no way I was playing it this event, but... Maybe in the future I might find space for him, but overall I just didn't think it was worth it. For Xyz Monsters, we have the actual best card in the extra deck, one Opabinia. This card is my favorite card in the extra deck by far. He's so good. Being unaffected by monster effects is great. Being able to search any Paleo trap from your deck is amazing. Activating from their hand is great, and you can use it to go into like some pretty nice Zeus plays because you can grab Canadia and then you know swing at something and make Zeus, so that was always nice. Uh, and yeah, overall this card was something I made a lot. You can put it back in extra deck because it's Aqua too, which is pretty cool. One totally awesome. Obviously we are on Paleozoic, so this is something you're going to play because all the Paleos are Aqua. Uh, this card was definitely super solid and there were a lot of times where I comboed it with Elf to have pretty much like a sprite end board where I could just like reuse totally awesome several times. Downard and Zeus. Now, normally in all of my test games, these have been like the best cards in my extra deck. Like, in my test games on DB and IRL, like these cards come up almost every game because you would use your follow-up to make like a four-mat Zeus that, you know, wasn't affecting your Opabinia and you would get your tier effects and Zeus was always insane at clearing boards. But I didn't make either of these all event. I'm like pretty sure I did not summon Zeus or Downard once and that is really unusual for my testing. I would still always play these. I think these are mandatory, but I, I find it really interesting in seven rounds, Zeus did not come up for me all day. Um, so yeah, that, but you definitely should still play these. For Lynx, I chose to make a last minute addition and play a card I tested originally, but then took out for the longest time, but I just decided to add him back in was Link Rebo. 
Uh, I was playing Anima over this slot for a while, but I, I don't know. I just chose Link Rebo at last minute. Yeah, this card is obviously just in here for if you draw Backjack as like your starter and your normal summon, you can make Link Rebo. And then you're able to look at the top part of your deck and set up your plays for next turn. I'm really glad I put this in because he actually came up twice throughout the day. So if I didn't have him, maybe there was a game I would have lost because I wasn't able to use my backjack. But I'm really glad I put this in because he did come up. One dark. Um, yeah, I think this card's super solid. I definitely recommend playing this. I only made him twice throughout the event. But he's just like so important to steal other link twos that can make your link four for a power play or just get additional monsters. Steal your opponent's B sticks. This card will just come up in several situations. And I don't feel like running like Anomalocaris or Garura is better in this slot. Um, so I, yeah, I just choose to play the dark. One elf, which is one of the most important cards in the extra deck because obviously you're playing merely. Um, but also for like totally awesome, this card's insane. And for another package we play in the deck to combo with the elf, we have IP Mascarena and Topologic Bomber Dragon, which this package in testing has been really good. Like in the hands where you just have gas with your tier limits and you're able to set this up, it's like super good because not only do you have the normal like Hobness special summon or like merely special summon to his zone, get your like two pops and your Kick Kalos effect, and then maybe have like Hobness to special summon and get another blow up. Every time you activate a trap card, you're able to like special a Paleozoic monster to his zone and get another like blow up the field. And the Paleo monster doesn't die because it's unaffected by monster effects. So Bomber Dragon in Paleo is exponentially more broken than it is in like other decks. So when you can make this, it was just, it's just like game. Uh, it didn't come up for me. I mean, IP actually came up for me to make um, like the next card in my extra deck, but Bomber didn't come up unfortunately, but in testing, he was insane. I don't know if I'd still play him because sometimes you really just don't need him to win the game and maybe fitting something else would be better, but I really do like this card. He gives you a Link 4 that's also a, like a B-Stick, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy to play Bomber Dragon. And then last card in the extra deck is the Underworld Goddess. You need this for like the math mech matchup or maybe like even adding Nister uh, if you play against it because unaffected monsters are very, very difficult for this deck to deal with. Underworld Goddess with IP comes up a lot to out them and... Yeah, this, she came up one. She came up twice in the event, and she won me a game for sure, and she definitely helped me win another game. So she was a super solid addition. All right, on to the side deck, which the side deck for this deck is extremely, extremely strange. It's going to look very different from most side decks because this deck plays so differently, and what I was trying to accomplish with my side deck was also different. So my go second cards, you're not going to find cards like Evenly Matched, Raigeki, Lightning Storm, the generic blowouts, what I decided to play was three Nibiru, which I, is pretty standard for a side deck, uh, so nothing like super special here, but also three infinite impermanence. And these were all of my go second cards versus like monster decks, except for another card that is more specific, but I'll get to in a bit. My objective was this, or like with this package, was that I was scared of curious dump eradicator called traps, or like curious dump anything broken I there was like a small rumor going around for the last few bits that people were starting to play Jinzo I wasn't particularly afraid of that but any broken degenerate combo deck that was setting up like an FTK board I wanted to be able to side in hand traps that do something and I chose these because one they combo really well uh, another is Imperm gives me something against the Wanderees which is nice these performed okay uh, I didn't expect this package to do anything amazing so I mean it definitely helped me in some games but it it wasn't anything crazy. Something to note about like the Eradicator board I was scared of and why I chose to play these instead of a card like Evenly Matched that destroys that board is against me, Eradicator is calling traps, not spells. So otherwise, yeah, Evenly totally would have been in the deck. Um, but yeah, it, it just lost to Eradicator, so I didn't want to. For backward destruction, it's gonna look a little unorthodox, but again, this deck plays very differently and that's why I chose this lineup. I played three Galaxy Cyclone. Um, this card in all of my testing was super good. I didn't actually play any back row decks if you look at my matchups. So it didn't come in against anything, I'm pretty sure, uh, which is lucky. But against decks that are running Floodgates, like there can be only one, like namely Eldritch, cards like Skill Drain, those are actually extremely difficult to deal with without the right cards. So being able to have Galaxy Cyclone to deal with Floodgates or cards like Mystic Mine or Anything super annoying that's face up, even technically dimensional fissure, if that came up, um, this card was a great out for. So this is my main source of back row hate. Uh, however, I also had one additional card in the form of the one Olenoides because it's an engine piece that is searchable off of Pobinia. So against a back row deck, you know, if I make uh, my link or my rank two, I can search this and just have a free back row hate card. It's also just like one additional Paleo. 
that you can mill, which is nice. The objective with these is, again, you want every card in your deck to be a good mill. So when you run, like, other Spell and Trap card hates, like Cosmics, you don't gain any value off of them. At least these do something if you mill them. So, like, the problem with this deck and why the side looks so different is siding things makes the consistency go down extremely hard. And that was my problem with, like, testing siding in this deck all the time was how much consistency I actually lost. So I had to, like, risk management my way into deciding what side deck cards were worth it. Like, I felt like Imperm and Nibiru, even though they're bad mills, are like worth it for the power they provide and what they'd be doing for me but like cosmic cyclone over um galaxy it just the risk management wasn't there like i feel like galaxy was a lot better uh for what i needed the deck to do so that's why i chose this as my like my spell and trap hate lineup all right now for the next package we have three ghost sister and spooky dogwood which was definitely a pretty clutch card all event and two skull mark ladybugs so Talking about Skullmark Ladybug, I think, you know, it's pretty obvious why these are in here. Sometimes in this game, you just need life points. This card definitely came up a couple times, and it was pretty clutch to win my Paleo Tier matchup and a uh, matchup versus Math Mech. So Skullmark Ladybug, definitely pretty good, but nothing more to say about that card. Uh, Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood was pretty MVP because, like, this is a card that can really help you versus, like, FTK boards particularly, or, like, even just regular, like, playing against tier or any explosive deck. Because, like, if you're going to get Lightning Stormed or Harpy Feather Dustered or Evenly Matched, a card like this guarantees you're going to live that turn, most of all. So, like, if you're afraid of those cards, you don't have to set everything. And you were, like, I was able to side this versus Math Knight, get to, like, 15,000 life points, and he just couldn't, like, finish me. And that was super huge because it allows me to play on the next turn. So, Dogwood was good for so many different reasons, obviously. Again, in Yu-Gi-Oh!, there are times you just need life points. So, this card was extremely good, and yeah. All right, that is going to do it for my second place Paleozoic Tier Limit deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out in what I do here on the channel. Let me know what you think of the deck down below. I'll be sure to read the comments and you can uh, tell me what you think. Anyone who plays this deck or has experience with the deck, let me know what you think of the build. I know a lot of people at the regional were asking me for my list, so you know, feel free to leave your thoughts and opinions, how you are running it differently, what tech options you like. I'll be sure to read those as well. So again, thanks for watching this deck profile. This has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube.